Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali and I'm a junior doctor. My name is Matt Chris. I run the small channel Matt Vlogs and I'm studying to be a physiotherapist. And today we're going to be giving you guys tips for new freshers going into university. I've had six years at university, you've had... Oh, technically I've had three plus one, four, and then one more before I graduate as a physiotherapist. And you were a fresher twice. So like between us, we've got a lot of experience with tips for new freshers going into university. We're gonna be making kind of five main points on my channel and then five points on Maticus's channel. There's gonna be a video there. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about settling into university, freshers week, clubs and societies, uh, tips for studying and like tips for what you can do in your free time. So that'll be this video on my channel. And then on my channel, we're gonna be looking at making friends, what stuff to bring to uni, heartbreak at uni and a few other bits and bobs. All right, so let's just get into it. As usual, everything is gonna be in timestamps in the video description, so if you wanna skip around, you can. And just quickly, this video is very kindly sponsored by Primark. Primark have this exciting new brand of homeware. Uh, it's all quite reasonably priced. It all looks pretty nice as well. So if you're thinking of decking out your university room with some, some like nice looking but reasonably priced stuff, you can check out their new range. All right, so point number one, settling into university for the first time. It's quite a daunting time because it's your first, for a lot of people, it's the first time that they've moved away from home. One of the most important tips uh, that I'd give is if you're moving in, try and get into accommodation as soon as you're allowed to because the quicker you can sort of get to socialize with people. And it's, it's weird because in the first stages, the early stages, you sort of make friends. You, they, they might not be like lasting friendships, but it's good to form bonds in the early stages as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like that kind of initially settling into university phase, that was like, I was really scared about that. I was like, oh, am I gonna make friends? Like, what's it, what's it gonna be like? There was one tip that I got from the student room, which was uh, you should always bring one of those door stoppers so you can just leave your door open. Like if you leave your door open and people like walk into you, like walk across your room in halls or whatever, then they will feel compelled to come in and say hi because everyone is gonna be in this, I wanna make friends stage. So if your door is open, it's very welcoming. And also something that I that I heard that I pr practiced uh, was that you should bring a few snacks, a few drinks with you. So I remember I took a few cans of Diet Coke and a few thingies of Capri Sun, you know, throw back to primary school days. And whenever anyone would come into my room, uh, I would offer them a Capri Sun or a Diet Coke. And that was a really nice way of getting to meet people. Uh, people would sit down for a few minutes, we'd have a chat and a nice way of getting to know people in the settling into university stage. I'd probably, I've not gone with the Capri Sun, I would have gone with the Fruit Shoot, if you remember the J2O oh, Fruit Shoot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate. Those were definitely, <laughs> no one refused them, so they were good. At the same time though, like, interesting what you were saying about having the door wedged open, because I think it gives a good impression if your door's open, it's sort of more welcoming. People would just come in and just be like, hi, introduce themselves. Yeah, and to be honest, that's something I've been doing like for the last six years at university. Whenever I'm in my room, sometimes even when I'm not in my room, the door is just always open. I have a very liberal open door policy. So like, you know, people feel like they can come in and I think that's a really good way of making friends. I think as well, like you want to unpack as soon as you can as well, because homesickness is a big thing. So you want to make your accommodation as homely as possible. And you do that by say, if you have like something that you bring from home, even if you have a teddy bear, like I don't have a teddy bear, but I know people who've brought teddy bears into uni and that makes them feel more comfortable or any, anything you can bring from home, hanging up pictures, posters, just to make your accommodation more homely. That's that's definitely, I mean, that's what I did as well. Yeah, I agree. Like, posters. Yeah, I think posters are really good but because like the walls in your halls are gonna be like really bare. And like often they're gonna say you can't hang stuff on, uh, on on the walls, but if you use those command strip things that don't like, you can stick posters on the wall and then when you take them off, it doesn't leave a mark or anything. Uh, that's how I kind of spiced up my, my university room. And, and on that note, uh, thanks to Primark, uh, if you feel like, uh, you know, decking your room out with some like really stylish cushions and throws and duvets and all this sort of stuff, you can check out their homeware range. It'll be linked in the description down below. All right, so those are our tips for settling into university. Let's now talk about Freshers' Week. So I remember when I was going to university for the first time, I was really scared about Freshers' Week. Um, so I don't drink and I heard that Freshers' Week is all about drinking and clubbing and partying. And I was very, very concerned that, oh, if I don't do these things, am I gonna make friends? Uh, well, what's it gonna be like? And I think, firstly, what I would say is that if you don't drink, then it's completely okay. Most universities, like at, at, at my college, most clubs and societies, they, they will have alternative Freshers' events where they'll, they'll have something else going on even when there's like a club night. So I remember Emmanuel College put on a movie night. There was like a board games night or something organized by the JCR, uh, the Junior Common Room. I don't know if that's like a standard university phrase. Mm, junior uh, Common is probably more like the posh, like Durham, Oxford, yeah, Cambridge. Yeah, the posh type thing. Anyway, so yeah, there were, there, there were all these alternative Freshers events organized and also you know, loads of different societies organized their own alternative Freshers week. So if you don't drink and don't feel like doing this whole clubbing thing, then that is completely fine. But equally, if you do drink or clubbing or whatever that that's fine as well like the thing that I've, I've, I've realized is that 
no one really cares what you do in Freshers' Week. I think, at least I felt Freshers' Week, there was a, I, I felt like there was a lot of pressure on me to kind of fit in and make friends and, and, and do all these things. But at, at the end of the day, it's pretty much just another week. Everyone forgets about it and it's not that important in the grand scheme of things. I don't know, don't know quite what you a lot found. Of people, yeah, quite a lot of people were so drunk in Freshers' Week they don't even remember Freshers' <laughs> Week anyway. So uh, it was just one of those things that you... It's interesting that you're talking about um, the not drinking part as well because I don't drink, but I did go clubbing. Now that's an experience, going to a club with everyone else drunk yeah. and then you being the only sober person. I don't know if it's possible to get sort of a little bit drunk on the fumes of people's <laughs> breath from alcohol, but I, I did actually have a good time. I think if you haven't been clubbing before, then it's definitely worth a go. I mean, would you say worth a go? Just yeah, a go? I think worth a try. Like, provided it doesn't like clash with any of your own personal morals or beliefs or whatever, you might, you might as well give it a try. Who knows, you might find you like it. You know, I'm always up for trying new things generally. I mean, I had a good time and I, from that, I realized that it wasn't for me. Uh, part of the reason was, we'll talk, probably talk about it a bit later in the um, clubs and societies thing, but I ended up getting a lot into sport and you actually meet more people from, uh, you draw people who are more like-minded if you just stick to the things that you want to do and don't get sort of peer pressure to go clubbing, although try it out, it's definitely worth a try. It's good fun getting back at like 3 a.m. in the morning and going for a cheeky kebab as well down the road. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, to be honest, we're, like me and my friends would be going for that cheeky kebab anyway after a few hours of board games and playing Articulate or whatever. So, you know, like, I think that's the thing with Freshers Week and, and university as a whole, that you can pretty much make of it whatever, whatever you want. And the nice thing about university is, as, as I said earlier, that no one really cares what you do. So you can become this kind of independent free spirit if you want. And I think ideally, and everyone kind of learns this as they go through university, you realize that actually I can just be myself and, and it's okay. I don't feel the need to become, a, you know, to be someone who I'm not, if that makes That's sense. That's a good one. Um, and one thing that I also uh, was concerned about, about Freshers' Week is that, oh, you know, w what if the friends that I make in Freshers' Week are gonna be, you know, all, all the friends I'm ever gonna make, essentially. But I think, like, looking back on it, there was almost no overlap between the, fr the people I hung out with in Freshers' Week and the people that I ended up becoming friends with long-term. I don't know if you found that as well. I sort of found that as well. So for my undergrad, I noticed that a lot of people hung out on first week, uh, you know, Freshers' Week. I, I was like, oh, these guys are awesome. We had a great time clubbing and getting a cheeky Macadies, like, at 3 a.m. in the morning. But it, I realized I don't really speak to them. I didn't speak to them by the end of the year. In the next two or three years, I didn't speak to them at all. I don't even talk to them. I, some of them I'm not even friends with on Facebook. So. Yeah, basically, you're not you're not tied into the people you hang, you hang out with in Freshers' Week. It's sort of you, you make friends from you know the common interests that you share during you know in in the late at a later date, I guess. So don't don't worry about who you make friends with in Freshers' Week, basically. So basically, in conclusion, I think everyone has some degree of anxiety about Freshers' Week. Don't worry about it. It doesn't really matter in the, in the grand scheme of things. But it's quite fun. You should enjoy it. It's the first week of university. It's all good. All right, point number three, let's talk about clubs and societies. Now you joined loads of new things at university. I, I did, so I actually did my undergrad at the Royal Vet College in London, but no one really knows where it is, so I always tell people I'm, I'm at, I was at King's because I didn't do modules at King's as well. And I ended up, funnily enough, I was tied to another university, University College London, UCL. So I ended up joining all their clubs and societies because they had so many clubs and societies. And I signed up to loads. What you want to do is just sign up to loads of clubs and societies on the mailing list. You might get spammed a bit, but it's good to have that option so you know what to do. I ended up picking up, um, well, I started um, Muay Thai, kickboxing, just before uni, but I picked it up again at UCL. Ended up competing and got into like amateur competition as well and did loads of interclubs. And that was really good fun as well. I got really fit, really strong. And you meet loads of people who are like-minded. And the best thing about kickboxing, I mean, if you don't like hitting other people, but like, I ended up making really good friends and you, you can you hit your friends in the face, they hit you in the face and then your friends at the end like, so I don't know what could be possibly better than hitting someone and then still being mates with them at the end. I don't know, that's the same for you. Um, <laughs> I also ended up doing parkour, if you guys know what it is, parkour and gymnastics. So I got into flips and doing jumps and walls and that's something I never would have got into if I didn't join a UCL parkour club as well. So. That's, that's really cool. That's a lot cooler than the societies I joined. Um, I joined like the Pakistan Society, the Islamic Society. I tried out rowing. I started squash, joined the chess club. Uh, and I, I, I signed up to the mailing list of about, uh, of about 100 different societies and I kept getting emails through, but that was fine because I knew that, oh, there's a Cambridge University windsurfing club trip next weekend. And 
like even though I never ended up going windsurfing, it was always there as an option. I was thinking, oh, maybe I could try that. And actually one thing that I would probably do again if I, if I, if I had that time again, I'd try out more things. Uh, I think I boxed myself in quite early on with, with the societies that I joined. And I kind of wish that I'd kind of had a more kind of scattergun approach to it, just like try out loads of different things and see what sticks. But yeah, with, with clubs and societies, just join the mailing list of everything, try stuff out. You might like it, you might not. Either way, at least you've tried it and then you won't kind of look back on that time and think, oh, I wish I'd done, I'd done more. I think, yeah, that's interesting that you say that because I actually joined a lot of the mailing as well for a lot of the clubs. So I was in like Taekwondo Society, uh, Wushu, I actually had a look at doing Wushu at Imperial College and my friend was at Imperial and he recommended, you know, you can come along and join up. <laughs> cool. So I ended up trying that as well in addition to all the other things that I was doing. Uh, there was like Live Music Society, Capoeira Society. And it was interesting because for my undergrad, I was so keen on joining so many different clubs. But um, now I'm doing a postgrad and MSc Physiotherapy at the University of Southampton. And to some degree, I've kind of, because I know what I want now, what I, I know what I like to do. Yeah. I've only joined Gymnastics Society. Um, and I've also got into powerlifting, so I do that outside of uni. But the only society that I've joined is Gymnastics Society, which is, yeah, I mean, it's okay to, I guess, if you know what you want to do, it's fine to box yourself in a bit more. Yeah. But if you're a fresher, if you don't really know what you want to do, it's best to get out there, join loads of, get spammed by loads of people, <laughs> join a mailing list, and you'll probably find, you'll make a lot of, you know, a lot of friends that you are like-minded, really. All right, so let's now talk about free time. And I've had so many messages from people on Instagram, me on, on Instagram, uh, saying that uh, how like how much free time will I have at university? Will I have time to do anything else? What are your what are your thoughts on this whole free time debate? The free time debate. I'm I'm like most people. I'm very guilty of saying I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I'm so busy. But after watching one of your videos that you talked about, there's no such thing as not having enough time. It's all about making the time for it. I think that's so true to some to a huge like it's just completely true. So for me, like uh, if I work a day at uni, like usually. Physio is quite an intense course, so especially since I'm doing a two year masters, it's from like nine to four, yeah. you finish and you're like, okay, I have a couple of hours before I have to go to bed, what do I do? I, I tend to go to the gym or, or I go out and do flips on, in the common and that does take up like an hour or two and that hour or two could be spent socializing. A lot of the time it depends on what you sort of prioritize. Like there are some days when I do prioritize like not being, not antisocial, but kind of doing my own thing instead of going to the pub and having a few pints with my mates. Considering I don't drink as well, it'd just be me having a lemonade, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I think this, this this free time thing, as, as Matika says, it is just about making the time to do whatever you want to do. And uh, something that I have been doing for, for ages is having work as kind of like my default thing that I'm doing when, I'm, when I've not got anything else to do. But if anything else comes up, like, you know, a social event or a dinner or a club or a society, any, anything like that, that will generally take priority over work. Unless, of course, you know, I have an essay in, in for the next day that's important or an exam to revise for, then the priority shuffles around a bit. So I think that is how I kind of got around it. I would always do stuff and then work would just be my default. And I think I was quite good at not overly wasting time. Um, and like, I, I suppose people say for you, oh, you know, you're doing physiotherapy, you've got a YouTube channel, you're doing gymnastics, parkour, powerlifting. And still having all, some all, remnants of a social life as yeah. well, like still seeing friends once in a while. I love what you said about not wasting time because I think I'm very guilty of that. I'm probably like, if I would have another university degree, it would probably be in procrastination because I'm very good at just sitting there and just thinking of other things to do. Um, so that's like quite a big thing. If you are good at wasting time like myself, then it would be a bit more difficult, which is why I start like planning out my day now. Like sometimes I plan out a week in advance and then every day I'll write like a to-do list and I'll have a tick box. And I found like I was very bad at managing my time when I was doing my undergrad. But now that I'm doing my, my postgrad, my physio course, because I know I have much less time to work with, and especially since you get more busy, I, I don't know if that's the same for you, uh, sort of coming to your fourth, fifth, and sixth year of medicine. Yeah, I don't know. So for, for us, second year was probably the busiest, but then after second year, it just got so chill. Like third year was insanely chill. I had like a lecture a week. Uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth years have been pretty chill because in, in hospitals, you kind of go in in the morning, you get what you want to get done, and then you pretty much have the whole afternoon free to do whatever you want. So it was a different sort of free time. But I think the thing with that is that that was when I, 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 had, I, I had the time to start the YouTube channel and to do all this kind of editing. Um, so my thing has always just been to always have something to do rather than ever having to sit down and work out, what do I do now? Because I have free time. It depends on what sense. course you do as well. Yeah. Like obviously as a medic or as any science subject. Um, so for my undergrad, biological sciences was something like 22 hours a week. For physio course I'm doing now, at one point we had 35 hours of lectures a week, so that's quite a lot. 
and really it depends like what, what course you're doing. I know people who do like history and English, they have like eight hours of contact time a week. So that's, you know, out of the week, that's a lot of time that they have to be doing their own study or just doing whatever they want. So yeah, I think managing your time, you get better at managing your time when you realize you have less of it because you realize how precious it is. Yeah, um, there was, so the, there's a medic in the year above me, was it two years above me? Um, and I, I, I was talking to him about time management a few, a few years ago and he, I always kind of looked up to him because he was like, doing loads of stuff, doing loads of sports, getting pretty good marks, taking an Arabic language course, really good at singing and guitar as well. And I asked him, you know, how do, how do you do all this in your, in, your, in your free time? And he said something really profound. Uh, he said that time is like a muscle in that the more you exercise it, the more you can get out of it. And I like really talked, I was like, oh yeah, that's, that, that, that's like profound advice, that the more you stretch your time and work it, the more you end up getting out of it. And then you get people messaging you being like, oh, how do you have the free time to do this, that, and the other? So yeah, make the time to do stuff have a priority list, uh, find some kind of balance. And finally, let's talk about studying. Tips for studying at university. Do you have any thoughts on that front? I think tips for studying, you can sort of, I mean, we were talking about this earlier before we started rolling the video, but we were talking about, can you study too hard? And I think that's quite a, a big thing for people. I know um, for me, I didn't really work very hard for my undergrad and then had to like pull my socks up for third year and still managed to get a 2-1, even though I was averaging like a mid 2-2, two -two, which wasn't great by the way. So tips to you guys just like study hard if your first and second years count because it will make your third year a hell of a lot of it well, much easier but for my physio course that I'm doing now it's very different because this is something that I know I definitely want to do so I am studying very hard because it's an, a short course it's two years so I know I have to like to get the top marks I'm gonna have to study all the way through and there's no there's no room to sort of mess about because I know for some of the BSc physios I share classes with and lectures with their first year doesn't count so they it doesn't matter as much for them, they just have to pass. So I guess it depends um, what, your, what your view is on it. Yeah, so um, I think when it comes to studying, it's, it's, it's that whole debate of how much do you study versus how much do you do, you do everything else. And uh, especially if you're you know, Asian, your parents are gonna be like, you know, you should be studying all the time. And you know, university, the whole point of university is studying. But actually, you know, it is about having a balance. Uh, I've spoken to people who didn't do very well at all in their exams, had to resit, got two twos, third classes, that, that, that sort of thing. And they have almost invariably said that, oh, I wish I'd studied harder throughout the year. But equally, I've spoken to a few of my friends who have done like insanely well, come sort of top five in the year, in the whole year group, who have said that actually maybe they think they've spent, they've spent too much time studying and they sort of wish that they had done a bit more other stuff. So I think kind of being on either end of the extreme is, I don't know, like it, it depends what you want, but it seems like it might not be the optimal thing. As always, as everything in life. It is about having a balance. Yeah. Um, and what's worked for me is this whole thing about, you know, having studying as the lowest priority, but still doing a, a bit of work throughout the year. And actually, if there's one thing I would say, if, if, if there is any advice that I think is applicable to everyone, is that you will benefit a lot from doing a little bit of work consistently. Because, especially because, you know, active recall, space repetition, I've done loads of videos about evidence-based study tips. If you can do something over a long period of time, you are far more likely to remember it and to actually internalize it than if you just cram before the exam. So, you know, studying for 20 minutes a day for like every day is going to be so much better than just cramming for your exam. So if you can get that 20 minutes, that half an hour, that one hour in, you will be absolutely sailing through university, especially if you can be doing efficient techniques like active recall and like categorization, and all this other stuff that we've talked about in, in other videos. So consistency with studying, doing a little bit each day, then you have just have so much more time to do everything else in life. But if you leave it all to the last minute and you're trying to cram your entire medical degree into the, the month before your exams, you will struggle. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be a really stressful experience you, and you just won't have a good time in exam term. Yeah, cramming is definitely not the way. It works like GCSE, probably up to A level, maybe at a push, but anything beyond that, like uni, it doesn't really work. So definitely like space repetition. And I know you were talking about I think you recommended Anki, those flashcards oh, yeah, as well. Yeah, love it. <laughs> um, I did try that, but I ended up sticking with something called Vet Revise, and it's like this online app you can log into with Facebook. And it's just, you, you type in sort of flashcards, you create your own flashcards, you have a question, you have an answer, and you have like, it's if you remember it really quickly, you have it on hard or good or forgot. And from there, it will sort of, it uses this algorithm. And in that sense, you can sort of, that's a way you can do a bit of studying every day. Yeah, quite so that's quite similar to Anki then, and like Memorize similar. and Quizlet. There's all these various flashcard apps that have this feature of the harder the flashcard was, the more likely it is to come up again. And that's a good way of, kind of as you said, getting work done each day without having to think too hard about it. Um, one thing I would also say for studying is that, especially like, 
I, the, the, this is definitely true of medicine. I don't know about other, other courses, but there is a huge over glamorization of how hard it's going to be. So everyone who applies to medical school has this idea in their head that medical school is a really hard and that you get a lot of books and that you have so much content to go through. And then we all feel good about buying massive textbooks and about, you know, pouring over our textbooks and like doing a nice little study spread and maybe Instagramming it or whatever. And we feel good about the fact that we're working so hard. Whereas in reality, medicine is quite straightforward. There's not much that's difficult to grasp in terms of concepts. It's just a reason of fairly large amount of content too that you have to learn. And when you're doing, when you have a, fa a fairly large amount of content you have to learn, I think the traditional idea of I'm working hard, which is I've got a textbook open in front of me, I'm like making notes from the textbook, I'm highlighting stuff. All of this stuff is a total waste of time. You can see my other videos on this about the evidence behind whether summarizing, making notes, highlighting, underlining, whether all that stuff is good. Uh, long, long story short, it's not. Uh, there's very specific techniques which involve making questions for yourself, actively testing yourself. All of these efficient study techniques are the way to study in a, in a way that means you have a lot of time for everything else. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing. If you're the sort of person that spends hours poring over a double page spread in a textbook, because in the back of your mind, you feel that that's what you should be doing, maybe reconsider that because if you can get more efficient techniques, you will have so much more time to enjoy the rest of university rather than being poring over your books. Well, I guess it also depends on how you learn best as well. Like for physio, there's a lot of theory you have to learn, but then it's really hands-on as well. Mm -hmm. And I find that I learn quite well from, you know, doing practical sessions and doing these manual techniques and mobilizations and doing these you know, active range of motion tests on, on people, on my classmates, and on my course mates, sorry. And I don't know if that's, I mean, I do learn well from theory, but I feel like you really drill it in when you, when you actually do it hands-on as well. Oh yeah, 100%. That's like doubly true in medicine, or probably <laughs> equally true in medicine. Uh, most of, like half of our exams in clinical school are practical based exams. There's only so much you can learn from the textbook. Uh, the, the rest of it comes from, from the experiential stuff. Okay, so uh, that brings us to the end of this video. We've talked about settling into university. We've talked about Freshers Week, clubs and societies, free time, and some tips for studying. And now we're going to be doing a part two on Maticus's channel. That'll be linked here and everywhere in the description below. And in that video, we're going to be talking about how to make friends at university, what stuff we'd recommend you bring to university, uh, dealing with heartbreak. I think we both had some a little bit of heartbreak yeah, at university and uh, stuff about accommodation and a few other things. So definitely check that video out. So thank you very much, Maticus. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. That's quite all right. And we'll see you guys in the next video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And you can subscribe to his channel as well. It'll be here somewhere. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.